capture this shadow, which is very fortunate for us. And so I, uh, I feel very strongly about the work you're doing, and I wish you best of success. Thank you very much. Are there any comments on the proclamation? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda. Res no, items 2 through 10, resolution number 12 CAT 346 to 12 CAT 354. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, move to amend that motion to uh, table. Uh, item number four, resolution 12348, approving the funding for fund 198 stadium fund agencies for tourism related activities. I have no problem with that. We'll withdraw item number four, resolution number 1238, table only, uh, until further um, discussion on it. So we'll proceed with the consent agenda as amended. No motion to made and second. We'll please read those items in the minutes, excepting item number four. Item two, resolution number one two dash three four six, approval of warrants and payroll for payment. Item three, resolution number one two dash three four seven, authorizing the legal defense and indemnity of of a Louis County employee. Item five, resolution number one two dash three four nine, appointment of Lewis County Community Emergency Coordinator for hazardous materials. Item 6, resolution number 12-350, adoption of the 2012 Lewis County Emergency Support Function, number 10, hazardous material emergency response plan. Item 7, resolution number 12-351, bid award for the pipe arch culvert material purchase with King Road Rehabilitation Project. Item 8, resolution number 12-352, approving a quick claim deed by and between Tim James Bowers for property located on Highway 603 near Vermont, Washington. Item 9, resolution number 12-353, approving an agreement between Catholic Community Services of Western Washington in support of the Senior Nutritional or Nutrition Mills Distribution Program in Lewis County. Item 10, resolution number 12-354, approving the, amend the amended bylaws for the Lewis County Traffic Safety Ta Task Force. Chairman, on uh, item two on the consent agenda, resolution 12346 approves nine special purpose warrants for the Baker water system for $26,014.68 and 240 warrants issued by the auditor's office for $936,122.27, totaling $962,136.95. Sheriff's office is next. No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we're doing that. Oh, okay, I'll do that. Uh, resolution 1234-347 approves a request by the Lewis County Sheriff's Office to provide defense and indemnification pursuant to resolution 03042 and 04-164 for uh, Deputy Matthew McKnight, who has been named as a defendant in the matter of Stephen O. Peterson, personal representative of the estate of Stephen B. Peterson, deceased, and been on behalf of its beneficiary, L.P., minor child, versus Lewis County, a political subdivision in the state of Washington, and Deputy Matthew McKnight, civil action number 3, colon 12-CB-5908, J.R.C., for actions allegedly taken in the course of performance of his duties for Lewis County. Law firm of Patterson, Buchanan, Phobes, Light, and Culture, Incorporated PS, is requested and authorized to provide legal defense as designated by the Washington County's Risk Rule. The Lewis County Risk and Safety Administrator is authorized to serve as an adjuster for this complaint. Uh, this is the officer who uh, was involved in a um, on duty shooting of an applying over a year ago for us. Suing the uh, county and the officer in this issue. And uh, this is done in the course of his duty. It's our uh, uh, decision to provide for both his defense and then notification in this particular. Okay. 
to that uh, formula, such as wind and weather conditions need to go in, so you might have to expand the, the area. But we have a generalized area that came out of the ERG book, which is an emergency response guidebook that's put out by the uh, HASNAT. So we put that in there, we did the evacuations. We also have new forms that are in there for uh, any kind of incident that does occur, which I should probably be using uh, coming up, the, being the uh, ECC, the emergency community coordinator. And then we also put in into that, uh, the plan, the actual position of the emergency coordinator. And like I said, that's gonna be an ongoing, we're gonna have more things that are gonna go into uh, on that person's plate as they come up. Um, being the first county to actually use this template and actually put this together, we don't have anybody to borrow ideas from, so we're going to be coming up with some of our own of what looks good. And um, we've also been told by the state, by CERT, that they are very happy with us using this their template, and that uh, they've asked us to actually pass it around to all the other counties to have them look at it and uh, show them how it actually can be used. And it, it actually was pretty easy to use. So um, we appreciate if you would uh, adopt the uh, ESF-10 by this resolution. Well, that's very good. I, I'm looking at these maps. Now, the, the sites that are located on these maps are they're, they're, uh, evacuation sites, or what exactly are the, I'm sorry, I didn't know. The, the maps that have pinpoints? They're sites that either handle uh, hazardous material or through which you Right, through the community, so, right, through have to, certain sites have to report. They're all on there that have to report, but the ones with the circles yeah. around them, with the dots in the center, those are the ones that are for the extremely hazardous materials. Yeah, and just going to comment that once again, the, um, our emergency management shop is at the head of the park. Uh, it's really great uh, to be setting the standard uh, for the state in many of these areas. Russ, uh, sometimes I think uh, cringes when I get hold of one of his plans. <laughs> <laughs> Cringe is not really the good thing. <laughs> but, uh, it's just nice to know that somebody is reading it. That's one of our, our biggest pushes we have is to get a plan is no good if it's just sitting on a shelf gathering dust. Exactly. If you haven't read it and you don't understand it, when, when it, it comes time to use it, you, you just don't have it. It's not going to work. I think one of the sidelines is, is, that Ross hasn't said here is uh, we have an awfully lot of hazardous, hazardous material that transits in the county, either on the railroad or on I-5. Uh, and, and we don't really have the, the crews or the equipment uh, to handle uh, should there be a spill, a crash, or, or something of that nature. And uh, you know, I, I was just driving down State Street yesterday and there's about 20 uh, black tanker cars that are uh, uh, parked there. And the content is liquid, liquefied uh, petroleum. Uh, and you're hoping that it's not full. Full is better than full partially, or, than partially or, or otherwise. Yeah. You know, these guys are just parked here uh, right now. So there are all, all kinds of things that could, could happen. One of the things that, that we're doing in our planning course is uh, making uh, contracts with neighboring counties that have response capability uh, so that we do have something that happens here. Right, that's one of my projects as the uh, emergency community coordinator is, is to do that. That's, uh, I've been tasked with that too. It, it's surprising the closest one right now is joining the Coastal Court and then there's a couple of them that are in Collins County and we're trying to work with the Collins County ones because uh, almost everybody north uses Joint Lewis McCord. So our chance if something does happen of getting them is a little bit slower. It would be, it would be a lot easier if we could get them with, with Collins County. Collins too and Longview to come up and get an MOU with those folks. Yes. As a related subject, you just had your annual kickoff for uh, disaster planning last Thursday. Uh, last Friday, yes. Last Friday, last Friday. Yeah. So um, here we are Monday morning, and there's predictions of high water and some minor flooding already. So I'm going to the date on that real quick. I should have never been going by your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to have a house.
house last night with the way the wind was going last night. I'll tell you, it was, it was kind of scary. Um, actually, over the last 30 hours or 36 hours, uh, some of our, our watchers that we have in the different areas that we poured into, myself and also Dean Dolan have, have recorded five and a half inches on the pale of rain. That's a lot of rain, okay? Uh, one of the things that that is, that did uh, kind of go into play with is we do have a, a warning on the Shales River at Doty. But as you look at the, um, the gauges and you look at the forecast, we're actually a couple feet less than what they originally were forecasting. So it has brought down, there'll be some minor flooding, there'll be in stage one flooding in the area, which uh, as we know, if it happens in Doty, it's gonna happen as it comes in down here. Uh, we're just hoping that this, this rain, rain is supposed to stop today. We're supposed to get another inch to an inch and a half today. And then it's supposed to be done for a while. Uh, then just go back to our normal showers that we get normally. Um, the Nawaka River is actually looking pretty good. It um, looks like it's out of its banks. It definitely is. Uh, there's a lot of the small streams. They put what's called an aerial warning on for small streams, which basically means Anywhere where water is flowing, it can go outside of their, outside of its creek or outside of its banks there. And we've got a couple of them that have called in already from the PL area that are actually west of PL that have said they have some problems with that. I've been in contact with our public works, Kevin Corby, uh, talking with him about it. But one of the major concerns that I see, I mean, I know we can handle flooding. We are really good at handling flooding. We got, we got that down pretty well. Uh, what I'm worried about is landslides. Um, because we've had, you know, for the past two or three days, of really heavy, intense rain. Uh, and the rainfall that did, did happen, being buckets at a time, can cause some real issues with landslides. Um, we have seen some in the past. The big famous term is mud flows. Mud flows, yes, they do not want to call them, but that's right. Slides. Because of the insurance. There you go. That's exactly it. A mud flow, which I don't. I don't know where they came up with that one, but that's kind of an interesting <laughs> one. But, uh, yeah, I think they, they said the liquefaction of, the liquefaction is the problem. It's an, it's yeah. an insurance. It's an insurance uh, term, yeah, let's put it that way. But I'm, I'm really concerned with that. That's that's something that I talked to uh, Kevin Corby about today and said, hey, I, I sent that out to all the public works guys that were really looking at this. I sent it actually out to just about everybody that is one of our major concerns. Um, looks like, for the, according to the forecast from the National Weather Service and also from Dean, that, that this is going to go on. We're going to have a little bit of this all the way through the uh, Thanksgiving day. So uh, we'll be watching that. We're going to stay diligent on it. I was up at four this morning with a phone call saying that it would change from a watch to a warning. Got on the computer at the house and, and saw where we were at. And, uh, I have some people out in the moisture area that are, uh, that are still very vigilant on the flooding. Uh, Greg Peterson, the fire chief out there, was on the email this morning. He was out right as soon as daybreak. He was out looking. At uh, currently, South Fork of the Shamus River is under flood. It's a, in flood stage four, <clears throat> excuse me, which is the only flood stage that it does have. And uh, that's going to contribute a little bit into the Doty area. Uh, that Doty area plus the Wildwood coming in, that will affect us down here So, So we do have some room though. We're not, we're probably, if anything, it'll be minor flooding. Minor flooding. We still have urban flooding because of the leaves. We, we always also have three road closures because of the water over the road. Right. One of those is Tights, guys. I hope that project's coming along. Tidesville Road is our first one that almost always It's almost always, and that, that is in District 1. Tidesville and Shorey, it's a part of Shorey Road, two Road, right there. Um, we are kind of uh, concerned. Labrie Road had some issues this morning on the highway, uh, I-5 at Labrie, and that was taken care of by Wasdot. That was another issue of some grading that got covered with leaves. <clears throat> but it put about two and a half inches of water on the road. So that caused us some problems during rush hour, early rush hour this morning, but that has been taken care of since. So. Uh, just a comment, this, uh, this document is very impressive. And, uh, it's concise enough where it doesn't take a year to read it. And yet it provides you with plenty of information that's needed in heavy situations. So. We've learned that over the years from one of your other copies. <laughs>
Good morning, Mr. Mousy, Coast County Public Works Director, speaking on item number seven on your agenda, a bit of work for pipe arch hole material for the King Road Rehabilitation Project. This contract will allow Lewis County to purchase a 15 foot wide by seven and a half foot high steel structural plate pipe, 85 feet long minimum and 88 foot long maximum with precast concrete footings for the King Road Rehabilitation Project, CRP 1937. The King Road Rehabilitation Project is scheduled to begin in June of 2013. A call for bids was made on October 8th. The project was advertised for two consecutive weeks in the East County Journal and the Daily Journal of Commerce. The project was also listed on Lewis County's website. There was one addendum that extended the bid opening date three additional weeks, and we received two responsive bids for this project on November 13th, 2012. Contact Engineering Solutions provided the lowest response to be of $70,211.61, which is below the engineer's investment of $114,000. We request, request approval of this resolution to authorize an action to execute a contract between Contact Engineering Solutions and Lewis County Public Works for the material purchase of King Road Rehabilitation Project. The, uh, the content is uh, from Portland, Oregon. The, uh, what is the reason for the minimum and maximum appointment? Skewed, covered. It's skewed across the road. Okay. And so is there a choice in the design? Or? No, it uh, has two different lengths on it, it because of the skewed design. Okay. So I don't, I'm don't. i not sure I understand why you have a maximum. Which one are we buying? The 88 foot one? The one? We're buying what's needed for it. So. <laughs> Oh, sure. Which one are we buying? You, you Bud Lake, we list kind of public works. Um, manufacturers vary in length, so Contact makes uh, an 88 foot, Big R might make an 85. It just depends on how those plates line up and come out. We don't want to penalize them because we have to pay them for the whole thing. We have to pay them for the extra if if they're manufacturing or, you know, if they can get by with three feet less, we can get by with three feet less. So, okay. Just the manufacturer. And, and so, and then we need to know what they do as we design the road to the point in the construction next year. So, this is a, a material purchase of something that will be used in the, the road uh, project. Speaking to item number eight, resolution 12 352, approving a quick claim deed, buying between Timothy James Bowers for property located on Highway 603 near Winlock, Washington. Lewis County owns a 2.61 acre tract on Highway 603 between Napa and Winlock. The property was declared surplus to the needs of the county and sealed bids were called for, but no acceptable bids were received. Lewis County Code 3.30.400 specifies that when no acceptable bid is received, the county may withdraw the property from sale and thereafter negotiate the sale of the withdrawn property, providing the public is given two weeks of notice by advertisement and an opportunity to compete for a more favorable price on terms of the of negotiated. An offer of $45,000 for the land and timber was received from Timothy James Bowers on October 15, 2012. Resolution 12 318 was passed by the Board of County Commissioners accepting the offer and authorizing an agreement with Mr. Bowers for the sale of the property subject to the conditions of Lewis County Code. All conditions of the code have now been met, and $45,000 has been paid to Lewis County in the form of a cashier's check. The approved, the attached resolution would approve a quick claim deed from Lewis County to Timothy James Bowers for conveyance of property located on Highway 603 near Winlock and authorized signatures thereon. And this, these funds will go into fund 506, which is the Pits and Quarries Fund, which is where the funds originally came from. The first part. You think so? <laughs> All right. Did Mike talk you into this? Yes. Oh, he did. Him and Doug together. <laughs> Doug's here in case I falter. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Danette, you are Public Health and Social Services Director speaking to items number 9 and 10. Uh, item number 9, resolution number 12-353, is approving an agreement between Catholic Community Services of Western Washington in support of the Senior Nutrition Enrichment Meals Distribution Program in Lewis County. So back in July of 2012, the county took back over the five senior centers that they had originally contracted out with Catholic Community Services. At that time, they did a six-month agreement between the county and Catholic Community Services so that they could continue to use the five senior centers to distribute.
distribute their enrichment meal program. And this agreement will extend that for the year of 2013. So effective um, January 1st through December 31st of 2013, this 12 month agreement will allow Catholic Community Services to continue to use the five senior centers to distribute the congregate meals. I said enrichment before, it's supposed to be congregate meals and allow them access to and use of some refrigeration and freezer units at the Twin Cities Senior Center. In exchange, the Catholic Community Services will agree to pay Lewis County $2,300 per month for the use of the centers in those areas for the freezers and fridge. I would just clarify that you're partially <coughs> right insofar as uh, the original contract with Catholic Community Services was to do also to do the enrichment program. In that regard, while they were running that program, they had complete control of the operations of the senior center. Uh, that program was costing uh, Catholic Community Services uh, more money than they had anticipated. And they you know, tried several uh, different approaches and decided that they couldn't afford the program. And so they gave us 90 day notice and backed off. And, and we have really picked up the enrichment program along with them, senior centers. Uh, and even when Catholic Community Services had the senior centers, they were responsible, we were responsible for the maintenance of those buildings. And so uh, we're back in this, uh, this process. So, but what we're doing here is that uh, in the nutrition program for our seniors, uh, it runs through the area agency on aging. There are two components. One of those is congregate meals where you bring them into a site serve them a meal on site, and the other is what we call meals on wheels, where we take meals to them, usually frozen, uh, that they could have. Uh, and, and the, uh, this contract is only dealing with the congregated portion because it's the only part that is usually part of our facilities. Uh, through the area agency on aging, Catholic Community Services still has the contract with them to provide meals on wheels and the transportation program, which is still good for us. Um, we, the reason we went into 2013 for this contract is that uh, one of the, the things we as commissioners were looking at was the satisfaction of the seniors with the congregate program. Uh, and uh, it's a costly program, and so we have to give uh, due consideration uh, to whether we want to take over that responsibility. Uh, the area agency on aging uh, contract period runs through 2013. And this spring, they'll be putting out an RFP uh, to, to do the 2014-2015, uh, both transportation and uh, nutrition programs. So sometime early in next year, there will have to be a decision safety programs in accordance with the standards set forth by the Federal Safety 
acts and the priorities established by the state of Washington. I've, uh, I've, I was on the DUI task force uh, for Bill uh, two years ago. And we were working on these bylaws at that time. So I want to congratulate you. And after four years, we finally had to set bylaws. <laughs> they, were, they were approved by the task force in July of 2012, finally. This, uh, the, the group incidentally does a, a great job. I don't know if you would agree with me. They are, uh, one program they do um, uh, is a uh, traffic safety program for all of the elementary uh, children. Um, we call it the uh, you know, safety city. Safety city. Safety city. Um, and they've been running over the Centralia um, uh, training area there, the, the old uh, sewer project. Last couple of years, I, I think you know, we used to be running at the fairgrounds, uh, but uh, it's a great program. And first of all, the, the elementary uh, children that are both the Centralia and Chandler school districts uh, get to go through this project. So it, it's one of the better ones. They also have free helmets and free you know, uh, uh, car, car seats for the children. They also have some extra programs uh, for those of you who would like to drive a lot more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments on the consent agenda? And I should be called for the vote. All in favor of the consent agenda as amended? So you notice an aye? Aye. 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 Four boxes, 
at 45 caliber, 230 grain. I'm having a hard time reading this writing. It looks like two boxes of 9 millimeter Winchester, 147 grain, and 15 boxes of 223 or 10 ammo at 55 grain.
The farms of the annual construction program are contained in the wax in 136.16. This part of the WAC is intended to provide for an evaluation of compliance with the county forces construction limits in RCW 36.77065. A hearing for the program must be held prior to adoption, and we're holding that hearing today. And Rob will speak to the specific questions. Before Rob speaks, uh, I know that we gave this a, a handout prior. And are you trying to take Bob Johnson's place before you leave? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, you did manage to get this in somewhat less than a ten form. The handout that uh, Mr. Harrell is speaking of is on the foot, <laughs> <laughs> along with the full, the full six-year transportation improvement program. That three pages of summary, which goes through, lists all the projects and uh, the acronyms or the uh, the abbreviations for the the funding sources. So it's a condensed version that shows milepost, location, what year, and where the funding comes from. So those are available if anybody like a copy, and uh, also the full report is available. The orange uh, clip report is also available. Okay. So we have 38 projects on our six-year transportation improvement program. Many of the projects in the first, the first, uh, first five are countywide program projects, and they deal mainly with things like bituminous service treatment or our chip seal program, cement treated base, which of those two we have 75 miles approximately of, of chip seal plan for the county. And our cement treated base is where we pulverize the surface, add cement, um, add rock, and then re-chip seal that roadway. We have five miles typically in each year. We have a list of projects for all of those so the BST, the, or excuse me, the chip seal and the, the CTB, if anybody is interested, but it's basically a countywide program and it's as needed. We have not finalized, but we're getting closer on those roadways. And we do have a list of uh, potentials in each area if anybody would like a copy. The other countywide program is the culvert replacement, uh, just replacement on a normal basis as they're failing and all Essentially, all culvert replacements are to meet fish passage uh, in western Washington. And then we have County Roadway and this lane safety guardrail, which, once again, if uh, a problem is identified on a bridge or a scour location or a safety intersection improvement, we would look to uh, make improvements through that County program. The next several are carryover projects. So, the Walken River Bridge, Coughlin. Road, bridge, and Coons Road are carryovers. They're actually in construction this year, and this would just be carryover money so we can expend funds um, that won't get uh, totally built out this year. So then we get into basically the the heart or the, the major projects planned for construction or design in 2013. And our tip, excuse me, our six-year tip, because this is a tip is a state coin phrase here, but uh, our program, our first year is called the Annual Construction Program, which we have to provide a copy to, uh, to Crab, like Tim mentioned, and then the, the rest of it is basically the plan through 2018. So in 2013, we have several major projects planned, of those being King Road Rehabilitation, Skate Creek, uh, Scour Mitigation, Looting House Bridge replacement, and that would be designed in 2013 and construction in 2014. Swaffer Road rehabilitation and countywide safety program, which will entail largely guardrail installation along uh, our major routes. We have uh, about a million, 1.1 million to uh, improve safety on our major routes in the county. We have to put any on Shuber Road. They have to qualify for, the, they have to be a Fed-A route, and Schubert Road, unfortunately, is not a Fed-A route. However, Schubert would qualify under our county program, and that's where we have, in the past, installed some rail, and we'll continue that effort. Are we closer to getting the city to fix the problem, so that we can put it in? 
the, the problem that Mr. Abel was referring to is the water line is basically in direct uh, conflict with where fire water supposed to be, and it's very difficult, um, very costly to either move the water line or provide for an additional embankment on a very steep uh, um, hill section through there. So, still in contact with with um, to try it, but. Um, they certainly have budgeting constraints for keeping them from moving that project forward in the evening. The projects that are listed um, in 2013 total $9.5 million. Of that, 9.5 million of that $5.24 million will come from external state and Fed funds. So all the grants that we've applied for and received funding for, we're well over half of grant funding. The rest of it will be from county funds. We have uh, we still have some flood projects and one of those, going back to 2006, by the way, um, three flood projects that total $4.5 million. And Looney House being the biggest, but uh, there's still the um, we still have some significant uh, projects that are left over from 2006, seven floods that are still in, in progress right now. And the total six year plan with all projects is 65 million for construction, design, and right away. And once again, once we get out of 2013, most of them are. There are a few projects, the major projects, uh, Centralia Alpha, Highway 603, and King Road for next year that are designed and construction for those three. But um, as you see on this on the summary sheet, there are the star projects on the on the left hand side. Those are our outside funding, basically anticipated. So. The funding is not secure. The programs are there in the future to apply for these uh, replacement projects or improvement projects, but we haven't necessarily secured funding on those future years. So they are planned, but uh, the funding is um, it's very subjective. You know, if money's available, so they may get pushed back, uh, they may get accelerated if the funding becomes available. But there are plans, so we can apply for those bed programs and hopefully get them constructed. And Keeping in mind that uh, we do have some design money, maybe in, in 2013, so we can prepare for those grants. So some money may be spent on those smaller projects or those projects to get uh, basically grant ready, so we can apply for those future funds. And that takes us essentially. There's a, a 38 projects. Um, if there are any specific questions, we can answer. And like I said, the, the handouts there go through the summary and also the full book. Um, we're talking on um, the culvert replacement. Uh, what happens if a culvert comes up for consideration because of the failure of the culvert itself? Um, and we don't have a list of improvements. Uh, we have to approve it, you know, the standards, and yet we don't have it in this program. So, what do we do in this situation? If it fails or is starting to fail, we're going to we either with either maintenance funds or we'll find a way in the program here, add more funds to this if there's not enough. It's unlikely that if it's a maintenance problem that there's going to be outside funding. Uh, there is a, I shouldn't say it's impossible, but it's just less likely if it's considered a maintenance because it's failed over time. And the trouble is you get, the typical here is we have a, uh, the culverts that we're replacing are four to five times wider than what exists right now. So the five footers become 20 footers. They're almost, they're technically a bridge just from the span. So they jump up in price. And part of the reason why we put that on the program is we can have some money because those things do come up and they fail. They're discovered and it needs immediate attention. It's not just something that can be planned and, you know, and that's kind of what's out. Concerned me because you've got, you have no money in there for construction and, and uh, culture. Right away, the money for the fish passage. They might have money for coal replacement, it's just not 
fish cache. So the surfboard is now under the three R program or is it coming under two? Now the it's just under the maintenance program. The uh, the actual culvert placement for fish passage would be for external funding only. And those would be that marked maintenance, sorry. I guess your question was more of if it's not necessarily a maintenance type issue and we're replacing the, the culvert is structurally sound, then we would go out, we can go after things like the surfboard, the salmon recovery funding board, or even US Fish and Wildlife does have opportunities. But it can't be a maintenance problem we're trying to fix with the fish passage because any culvert place is going to be fish possible. It's just that this one's got to be structurally sound. We're going to leave it in there unless we get funds to replace it for fish passage. But Lee, are you thinking of the problem we had in New York? We had a failure and then had to get to the legislature. Yeah, I was thinking I was thinking more specifically the minor program that it's gonna have to be replaced because it's in the process of failing as well. And then these other issues that we have to deal with as well. I was curious as to where that might even come from. Since it would come from the funds and all sorts of stuff. As I understand that project, that's gonna be a maintenance project. Yes. I have a couple of comments. <clears throat> this, uh, when I look at the six year transportation improvement program, it reminds me of the time I spent as federal service and looking, uh, budgeting at the federal level, we said for five years. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, the only year that is of any merit is the first year. That, that, that's the one that's going to be the money that I, that I spend. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, we're doing a six year plan. You know, we'll prove another one next year and it's not going to be exactly like this because things happen. There are changes that, that take place there. We certainly are interested in that annual plan that we have because that's what we're, we're actually going to be working on. But we found in the city of Centralia, there's also a fact as I sat there and I'm sitting through there, which is not a step, that there are occasional uh, times when money becomes, comes up uh, and uh, you're stuck at Be there, or you can't get access to the plan. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that is still in this six year transportation, to, transportation program is the Forest Avenue sidewalk and, uh, and winding project, uh, which was a high priority at Central City Council until earlier this year when they changed uh, the priority. It's now down to third, and it's out of the funding for this year. But should money come in and we have an opportunity with that project, we have it still. Now we can proceed. Uh, the third uh, issue is that uh, we can and do make changes during the year when uh, projects do come up and, uh, and funding does come up and, and, uh, and we need to do, uh, do something about them. So um, uh, this is in many ways a guide required by the state. Uh, the annual plan is probably more important than the, the six-year plan itself, but uh, it does tell us what we are looking at. And I, uh, I do want to applaud uh, public works over the last few years with some uh, pride. Uh, we are getting out to a wider audience in the county, giving them an opportunity to see where we're going and make comments on this. And I would hope to Every once in a while, I'll have someone call us as county commissioners and say, I really have a problem on this road. And we go out and send someone out there, and sure enough, there's a problem. So we've got over a thousand miles of road, and some of them are a little off the beaten track. Uh, there could be things that happen out there that we don't know about that we need to fix. It. So the, the more publicity that we give to this program, to give folks to say, hey, I've got a problem. I I just hope that it get done a little bit more quickly than around the tree road. Um, and that's a very good point, <laughs> and that this program does change based on public input. And we do solicit public input throughout the year through either telephone calls from the um, website, we also often get inquiries from the website if we need to go out and uh, present this program. But it is very important to understand that the public can change this program based on what they see out there. 
I would also like to mention, and just uh, to add on to what Rod mentioned earlier, is that we have programs that are scheduled about six years, so that if, if you look at the projected fund balance in the road fund, it gets projected very negative in the future. We get down several million dollars in the negative. That will not happen. If uh, we cannot fund construction projects, we simply will not fund construction projects. But we have them on the list so that we can apply for proposed state funds. Are there any questions for this project? Just one, uh, just one thing to add. Uh, we presented the proposed tip to the mayor's meeting at the Board of County Commissioners on, on October 5th, the Planning Commission meeting on October 9th, Lewis County Transportation Strategy Council meeting on October 15th, and the Tri City Council on October 23rd. There were questions, however, a lot of the questions, I would say 99% of the questions were related to maintenance activities like um, when is the project going to be chip sealed or not necessarily for total reconstruction projects. We did get a couple of comments on Tri Alpha and the section that is planned and actually um, we have funds received or grant funds received is a section there by Thousand Trails that we'll be constructing in 2015. Design from 14 right away and then 2015 construction. So the planning commission, their only uh, comment was they liked the, the, uh, the projects that were submitted. They encouraged that we keep um, keep continuing the effort for developing for economic development. So improving roads for economic development, specifically in the South County. So the, the projects that are on here uh, for South County 505 corridor improvements. And then also uh, the Harrison Avenue improvements, so uh, continuing that effort for economic development. So there were no written comments received from those presentations, other than, like I said, for the main gear towards the maintenance, what's our striking plan, what's our chip seal frequency. Seven years is typical for roads, but it can be extended. So questions like that, meaning the transition or the planning commission. One last question, Rob. In, in, uh, on these projects that have outside funding, those are site specific funds, so they can't be transferred to another site to be used to speed one up and maybe some more visible important. Virtually everyone is in competition with someone else. With the only way to transfer funds is to get those back, go back into the pot, and you risk losing all of that, uh, specifically with RAP and other things. So the answer is yes. The answer is, the answer is no. <laughs>
program. I second that. Motion to be accepted. What will Kirk be doing that in the record? Adoption of the 2013 annual construction program and six year transportation improvement program for the years 2013 through 2018. This is resolution number 12 355. Any further comment? I'll call the vote. All in favor of adopting the Secure Transportation Group Program? Seeing by the same aye. All right. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we have other business this evening, but it's not until 5 30. I move that we go into recess. I second. Move the second that we move into recess until 5 30. And for me, uh, that, the reason we're doing that is uh, we're having a night meeting on the 2013 budget, and we'll be in this room <coughs> at 5.30 p.m. It'll be very exciting. You won't want to miss it. <laughs> Motion to be second at all those in favor of saying aye. 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 Aye.